Well then, time to cool off. It seems the burden of the foul legacy transformation was too great for my body. I lacked the opportunity to think this through. And now that I consider the matter more carefully, you never had any chance of beating me to the Gnosis. You had no connection to the Gnosis, no matter where it had been taken. That's what we've been trying to tell you! We didn't take it! Your show of ability today far surpasses that of Senora's initial assessment of you and Mondstadt. Tell me, how could that be? You already know the answer, don't you? I can see it in your eyes. But if that is a secret you wish to keep, I guess I'll just have to curb my curiosity. This battle has already left me satisfied. Anyone who strives as I do to grow stronger shall be called a friend, even if our friendship can only be shown in battle against one another. Pretty sure that's not the normal way to make friends. Unfortunately, I must bring this amiable conversation to an end. My quest still beckons. Given that the Gnosis wasn't taken by anyone, then we must look once again to the beginning. Perhaps it was never in the Exuvia to begin with. In fact, it might be that the Exuvia was just a diversion of sorts. What? So you mean that... Yes, it appears so. Interesting to say the least. It seems that the guardian deity of the capital of commerce is also well versed in little maneuvers beyond the boundaries of contracts. As such, we must now look to our backup plan. Backup plan? I had hoped it would never come to this. I absolutely detest working with those who are weaker than I. The truth is, the world belongs to those of us who desire to become strong. I seldom willingly mingle with any dull and boring weaklings who think otherwise. Unfortunately, we cannot be picky about our methods as Fatui Harbingers. Children must all learn to eat their vegetables sometime. So what are you planning to do? I will awaken the god that lies dormant beneath Guyan's stone forest. A god? Osile, overlord of the Vortex, who was defeated by Morax, the G.R. Archon in the Archon War, and who has remained pinned beneath the waves by the G.R. Archon's stone spears ever since. If such an ancient god would be unleashed upon Liu Harbor, defenseless without the protection of its deity, do you think the cunning Rex Lapis would just stand aloof and watch the ensuing destruction? But the Archon War ended 2,000 years ago! How can an ancient god appear in a world now overseen by the Seven? Simple. I've already prepared the means to awaken it. Hey! Those are sigils of permission! Oh, but I'm on your numbers now! The Fatui have been researching them! Indeed. The one that was given to you was just a byproduct of our research. With the power of so many sigils of permission concentrated in one place, along with that which was bestowed upon me as a harbinger by our Tsaritsa, breaking the subduing might of the Geo Archon spears for a time should be no obstacle. Using the powers of ancient gods in such a situation fails to interest me, and is largely against my principles. But knowing that such an action will not only force the Geo Archon to show its hand, but you as well, that makes matters a little more intriguing. <laughs> Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Nia, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. Huh? He's 
He's already gone! That guy is fast! Uh, what's going on? Exhausted. If we hadn't happened to see the Jade Chamber flying over just as we came out of the Golden House, we really wouldn't have known which way to go. <sighs> Do we make it in time? Is the Overlord of the Vortex still in the sea? It hasn't destroyed Leila yet, has it? What are you doing here? Hold on! It's the Adepti! What are you doing on the Jade Chamber? Hyman thought you were arguing with the chi -Sing. Is the fighting over? Faced with a calamity of such magnitude, we have agreed to put our differences aside for now, and unite against this common enemy. <laughs> oh, Hyman gets it! So how do you plan to defend Leela? Eh, just seeing this Overlord of the Vortex guy puts a pin in Paimon's tummy, even from all the way out here. It's not just you. We've got new Millilith recruits who can't even stand at attention without shaking. The full... Which is why we must stop that monster before it gets any closer to Liyue Harbor. So the Archon War was fought 2,000 years ago against enemies like that thing? Now that's scary. <sighs> so will the power of the Chi-Sing, Millilith, and Adepti gathered here be enough to stop that god? We've already discussed this together, and our conclusion is... not necessarily. What? But all of you are supposed to be the Guardians of Lila! Can't you think of something? One certainly could. Huh? The Chi Sing did once research the matter of the Guizhong Ballista when it piqued their fancy. And as fate would have it, one who did craft the Guizhong Ballista with one's own hands is here. For what could you mortals ever learn of Adepti mechanisms? Yet it would take one but a little tinkering to turn this Ballista into an engine of war beyond your wildest thoughts. <laughs> I suppose this is one blessing from the Adepti that we should be thankful for. So be it. We shall use the upgraded Guizhong Ballista to fight off that god. All the Adepti here can lend their strength to man it. We haven't a moment to spare. Our battle begins now. Yep.
Let one see what you are made of then. What strength remains within you? One wishes to witness. you can withstand three forms of adeptal energy at once. This will hurt a little. Please bear with us. Once you've adapted, try to use them in battle. Yes. 
Adept I will be able to deal with the god in peace. Interlopers are no more. Now we may commit ourselves fully. Guizhong Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. Uh, what do you mean, Lady Ningguang? I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler. Lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. The ominous aura of that monster has indeed begun to fade. The effects of the Sigil of Permission last but a short time. It will be some time before the Overlord of the Vortex can make any waves again. We are indebted to you for your assistance. If the Adepti hadn't happened to be here, the future of Liyua Harbor would surely have been in great jeopardy. Save your flattery. We didn't just happen to be here. Surely you won't pretend to have forgotten the reason for which we came. Come now. There's no need for such harsh words, Cloud Retainer. I've heard that when Ningguang began learning to do business, she had already started setting aside part of her then limited income in preparation for building the Jade Chamber. At first, it was only the size of a small room, but with continued expansion, it has become the palace that lies before you now. It is a testament to Ningguang's entire life, both as a businesswoman and as the backbone of the Liu Qixing. Seeing the Jade Chamber destroyed in the defense of Liu means much to her. To me, such cooperation and sacrifice deserves at least some recognition, don't you agree? Well... I was really hoping you would say that such sacrifice could at least be used as some leverage in our negotiations. <laughs> Thank you all for hearing me out. We know very well why the Adepti came here today. But please- Oh? 3,700 years. According to our records, 
The Adepti signed a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Liyue 3,700 years ago. Even to this very day, Liyue and its lands have stood the test of time, immovable as stone, just as it was thousands of years before. This is truly no small feat. But that does not mean that the Liyue of today is the same city as it was all those years ago. Do not merely cast your protective gaze upon the land. Instead, focus your sights on our city and each of the citizens that dwell within it. Are you questioning our means of protecting Liyue? Hmm... I mean no offense. I simply hope that our Adepti forebearers would see Liyue in a new light. Ha! <laughs> forebearers, you say? One doubts you would be fit to be part of such a lineage. This morning, Rex Lapis appeared to me in a dream. What? In the dream? I yearn to tell him that we Chi Sing, though mortal, are equally bound to the contract. Each passing generation of the Chi Sing leaves many things of value to be inherited by the next generation. I also thought to tell him how the past generations of Chi Sing had strove under his rule to survive in our mortal world, establishing a network of contracts which has since come to be known as trade. But I dared not speak. I could only gaze at him in silence until the moment I awoke. Oh, Ningguang! Yet another perspective. What are you trying to say, Outlander? Right! That's something that happened in Mondstadt. It's a story about the Four Winds and the people of the Animal Archon. The Animal Archon sought to quell the strife between the two sides because he believed that such conflict would only scar the hearts of both and that nothing good would come of it. Each of the Seven Nations has its own scars from the past. Though your point is the very height of simplicity, as Adepti, we've become a laughingstock to be chastised thus by an outlander who has lent us such succor. All right, all right. Didn't Ning Wong suggest that we should focus on the city and each of its citizens? I know I already have, so why not see for yourselves? I apologize for appearing in full armor. I am afraid I cannot show the proper courtesies. And who are you? I am Feng Yan, a sergeant of the Millilith. I have come to extend my thanks to the Adepti. I thought this battle would perhaps be my last. But thanks to the aid of the Adepti, our forces were not as badly battered as I feared we might be. Although I am a mere mortal soldier, I promise to hold the line and never betray the grace given to us by the illuminated Adepti this day. Hmm. Hmm. Huh? Why does everyone look so down? Didn't we just beat that big monster? <laughs> Weren't you frightened, dear? It was quite the predicament. I wasn't afraid. All the strong Millilith guards were there, and those powerful heroes with their visions were there. Everyone was there. When danger is near, everyone always protects me. And the rest of the time, they make fun toys and tasty snacks and... and loads of things that make the harbor so pretty! Thanks for protecting Liyue Harbor! Please, come visit us for the next Lantern Rite! Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to participate. Huh? Because we are Adepti. Oh, okay... It must be hard being an Adeptus. You see, this is what Liyue is like today. The country of contracts is grateful to the Adepti for their protection. But it is no longer necessary for the city to rely on the Adepti's power to solve every little niggling matter. Although their blood is weak, there is still strength to be found in those we call mortals. The time of contracts between gods and Liyue has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Liyue and its people. Hmm. 
Seeing the port around us now, it is hard not to feel a bit out of place. Wouldn't you say so, Cloud Retainer? Your line of inquiry is askew. One did not spearhead this expedition to Liyue Harbor. Hmm. Seems like the Adepti have had a change of heart. Let us return now. Eager to leave, Conqueror of Demons. <laughs> yes, one understands what the Conqueror of Demons means. The city of Liyue has changed much after our long separation. One fears that by the time one finally grasps the new contracts of Liyue, you humans would have once again changed the place beyond recognition. Fair enough. Away we shall, and return whence we came. Hmm. Since we Adepti have consensus, then one shall persist no further. But how will we ensure that the Liyue Chising will not simply exploit their power once we depart? In my view, that is still a thing to be guarded against. <laughs> All right, Mooncarver, you needn't worry. It seems to me that this right of supervision is best left to the people of Liyue. <sighs> Looks like the conflict between humans and Adepti was avoided. All's well that ends well, huh? Oh, right! It's nice that we've got peace and all, but we're forgetting one thing. Child wanted to unleash the god so he could lure Rex Lapis out. But we were able to handle the Overlord of the Vortex on our own. So Rex Lapis never showed up. Oh, and speaking of that, don't we still need to get to the bottom of that Archon's death too? Get it. But isn't the strongest lead we have the Adeptilus Rite of Parting that we're organizing? No idea where Zhang Li's going. Let's ask for him at Wang Shen Funeral Parlor. Is there anything I can do for you two? I'm afraid that Wangsheng Funeral Parlor isn't in the best state to receive guests. We've come to see Zhang Li. Could you please tell him we're here? Unfortunately, Zhang Li isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Last time we saw Zhang Li was before we went to the Golden House. Do you think he doesn't know about the attack on Liu? Visiting the Fatui at a time like this could only mean more trouble. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay. yourself. You, you call this, this cooperation, cooperation between harbingers? Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Johnny and Child! And... You! You're also one of the Harbingers? <laughs> it's you. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Ibarra, was it? I'm glad I still remember my name. Ah, right. I 
imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched away from your friend. Well, if it isn't you two, this is our first time seeing each other since Leo was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit awkward, wouldn't you say? I knew that we should never have dressed that up to the Tui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> Nothing personal. We just have different views, that's all. Of course, you may very well hold this against me, but that's up to you. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhang Li. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. What in the world are you talking about? The contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. <sighs> Sanctimonious. What? So you're the Lord of Chia? No, wait, that's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract. For yeah, you don't think you went a little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? Everyone was preparing the ceremony for you and splat! This big dragon falls out of the sky and all of Lyric goes into an uproar! Talk <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. Until one drizzly day, as I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? Oh, Zhang Li! But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. So I feigned my own death and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Leo Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Leo. That's right, which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Leela back under control? Of course, and it would have been all too easy for him too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liu matured when faced with the death of its deity. I was pleasantly surprised with the finale of the show that you all put on. Why, you even deserved an encore. The Adepti deserve the greatest applause, considering their years of seclusion. They hardly recognized the city, yet faced with such a crisis, they exerted the greatest amount of restraint. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Qixing, but in the end, they even tried to understand the heart of the people. And hats off to the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract, Signora. She managed to keep everything she knew in strict confidence, far from the eavesdropping ears of her colleague child, just as I had requested. All the while, I carried on as Zhongli, and fulfilled the traditions of Liu, 
in this mortal form. Thank you for walking that path with me, Traveler. These things were all a part of my script. The only unforeseen plot twist was the conduct of the Leo Achising. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Leo. But when all was said and done, they seized the opportunity to supplant Leo as divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Leo. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! <laughs> On the contrary, I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, adepti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liyue, would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Be that as it may, you've come out of this as the hero of Liyue. I, on the other hand, will be forever prescribed as a disturber of the peace, no? <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapoljarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Right! As Zhongli always told us, a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. Since we're going through with this rite of parting, I guess it means that those rumors hit the nail on the head. So Rex Lapis is really... <sighs> but they didn't catch the culprit, did they? Oh, come on. Do you think that the assassin could have been a normal person? You know what I think. I don't think any of the gossip on the streets you hear from those shady types is worth anything. There's only one real possibility in my mind. 
I've heard that the assassin was that Fatui fellow. Youngish, pretty high in rank. I think they called him child. The Fatui? Hmm. They certainly are very suspicious. Who knows what those greedy, crooked folks... Shh! Lower your voice. If the Fatui catch you in their sights, Rex Lapis won't be around to protect you this time. You know that god from the ocean couldn't have just shown up out of nowhere. I mean, it's been 2,000 years since Rex Lapis subdued it. Yes, and to think that this happened right on the heels of the incident with Rex Lapis, too. Say, do you think the person who assassinated our lord and released that evil god might have been one and the same? Now that you mention it, that's very possible. Yes, it's very possible indeed. I mean, it all fits together. That person must have colluded with the evil god to harm Rex Lapis. Oh, that wicked black-hearted... Still, what sort of supernatural prowess must this person possess to be able to do such things? I have never heard of such a person in all my years. Ah, forget it. Guessing's no use to us. Look, the Millilith over there looks like he's about to make an announcement. Let's hear what the Ministry of Civil Affairs has to say first. Hear ye all, the Chi Sing's words. Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains, it too must return to dust. This is common knowledge. Gods and Adepti live glorious lives, but both light and shadow have their season. So too must they face divinely appointed trials. Rumors and hearsay abound on the streets that Rex Lapis was murdered. Now, let the truth be revealed. Having been thwarted in his trial, Rex Lapis's soul has recouped the celestial heights. He beseeches the people of Lyra to grieve not and to let not their hearts be saddened. Nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. a translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement. <sighs> so that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Not to mention how this excuse sounds like something they just made up on the spot. Could the Chi Sing already have known that Rex Lapis wasn't dead? But Zhang Li? Hmm. Did Zhang Li tell them in secret after his gnosis changed hands? Exactly, right? Ooh, seems like the Rite of Parting has been going on for a while now. Let's go have a look. <laughs> look, it's Ningguang and Kuching. Are they saying something? Are their speeches over? As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous. But blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we re-establish our contracts? As we build a new age of prosperity? So concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence the Yuhang have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the traveler who they say defeated the ancient god? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Whoa! Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters?
Roping you in was possibly... And to think I'd put my best perfume on before coming here, thinking. But it seems as if those perfumes really were meant to be offered to Rex Lapis. Well, that's fine. Suffer no rivals in love, they say. And that's three gone. The cleanup of the premises, managing the crowds as they exit, making an account of the right? There's much that remains to be done. I didn't miss anything, did I? Hey, Zhongli! Look at this! Everyone in Lila is caught up in their emotions, thinking that they'll never see Rex Lapis again! And here you are looking all relaxed! <laughs> Why would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years? Right, if the two of you can spare the time, I should treat you to a meal at the Xinyu kiosk. Ha! That sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Paima might have believed you if you were treating us to some third round knockout. But you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinyue Kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm. You're right. I do like the Mora. But why would Morax lack Mora? As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhongli, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. When I was journeying with you, though I still had the Gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon, so I had to... rehearse a little for my new life. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it now! You didn't look at the price tags when we were spending because you've never had to! But, since you weren't used to not being able to just make more Mora as and when you wanted to, you had to try becoming a parasite to society who lives off of other people's credit. Well, we were only spending Fatui money. You don't have to say it like that. In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. We also exchange knowledge, memories and foresight as well as positions, roles, and lives. The Archon Morax could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could. No matter... <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli, traveling the streets of Liyue with you. That is true. But there is no journey that does not end. No meetings without partings. We should make a move and continue our search for the Seven. I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. The nation that neighbors Liyue by sea in Azuma is presently closed. The Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. Um, Paimon thinks we've heard that one before. Uh, Ry... Raiden? That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of the Inazuma Bakufu, people call her the Raiden Shogun. That said, though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. It wasn't that bad last year. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, life, the gods will look upon them with favor. 
This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tevet see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Vision Hunt Decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders, and to inlay them upon the hands of a statue of the Thousand-Armed Hundred-Eyed God. They want to seize visions. But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Whoa, that's harsh. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom, and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven, have now passed away, will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods, and of these, eternity is nearest unto heaven. All right then, was there anything else you wish to know? That's right! Zhongli, now that you don't have your Gnosis, what's going to happen to all the more into that? Since Morax is dead, are they all just going to disappear? Also, isn't the Golden House the only mint in the entire continent? Will it even continue to work? The Mora present now will not vanish. But the Golden House will indeed have to cease operations for a lengthy period of time, since creating Mora requires the use of the Geo Archon's power. <sighs> this is terrible! We're all about to run out of Mora! The world is coming to an end! Yes, this is indeed a major issue from a financial standpoint. Uh, well, I suppose we'll just leave such troublesome matters to the Liu Achising to debate. Then, did you at least set some private- Oh, a private- <sighs> What's a shame? It's a shame that I didn't think of it at the time. All right then, was there anything else you wished to know? Well then. I suppose you'll have to find a way to get inside this closed nation. Have patience. I... S <laughs>